Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and a new season of Ranked Battles is here, and lots of people are trying to fight it out in the most fierce and competitive version of World of Tanks to be able to get this, the 114 SP2, which is an upcoming Tier 10 Chinese tank destroyer reward vehicle, which I've already covered on this channel in a preview slash review video. But today's video isn't going to be about the 114 SP2, it's going to be talking about the system that Wargaming have in place that you battle other players and unfortunately your team to be able to try and earn these exclusive rewards. And why, in my opinion at least, the system is flawed and actually encourages toxic behavior and lack of camaraderie and team play, which kind of should really be the focus in a team-based multiplayer title. So firstly, for anybody who doesn't watch my streams actively, or maybe this is your first time coming across the YouTube channel, well, a big welcome to you. You might be thinking, who is this idiot to talk about ranked? Do they even play it? And yes, I've been playing ranked since the beta seasons, and apart from the very first one, I've managed to get gold, at least on my main account, and even in some seasons on my free-to-play account, every single time. And every time I play ranked, I feel different than any other game mode of World of Tanks, and not in a good way. And it's down to this, the Chevron system, and how I think it is completely flawed, and I would implore Wargaming to reconsider it for the good of team play inside ranked battles. To highlight the problem very quickly, it's the fact that within the winning team that we see here on the left, the top two players are getting two chevrons each, while the three bottom players are not getting chevrons, while on the losing team, only the top player gains a single chevron, and then the three players underneath them don't lose a chevron, while the bottom six players are losing a chevron. What this effectively does is it means that winning is not enough. And surely that should be the whole purpose of a ranked battle. Why is winning your round, which should be your ultimate goal, not enough to be able to gain equal rewards with all of the other players in the battle? This effectively means that you are in competition with your own team as well as also being in the competition with the enemy team, which means that if this was a random battle, it would be 1 versus 29, but as the Wargaming has now decided to make it 10 versus 10, it's more 1 versus 19. This alone creates an incredibly toxic mindset. The idea that you're going into a game, and even though this isn't a battle royale, it kind of feels like it is. And that feeling of despair at the end of the battle, where just because maybe you got Amaract or you decided to play a, a non-meta vehicle, that you're not going to actually make any progress towards your goal, even if your team wins is absolutely disgusting. And more importantly, it also changes the very way that players can play in ranked if they want to continue up the chevron chain. Players play overly cautiously at the start of the battle, because of course, if you risk an early death and you end up in the bottom three, even of the winning team, you're not even going to gain a chevron. This also means that if players see that the battle is not going to be a ruffle stomp where you completely obliterate the enemy team, they play overly cautiously at the late game to try and milk as much XP out of the battle as they possibly can. And it's so frustrating for me to see players literally all huddled in the corner, camping, waiting for a grizzly demise, trying to fight over the zombies that are effectively pushing towards them because of their fear of dying early and risking getting low experience. And quite often games are being lost because players are playing in that way. Honestly, you could probably be able to come back into not the majority of your games, but at least a significant minority of them if you decide to club together and actually push out through one of the flanks rather than cowering in the corner and waiting to die and lose. But at least you're going to lose better than Jimmy, so you don't end up losing a chevron. The fact that the rewards are not universal across the team causes players to act selfishly to be able to boost their own experience. Just alone yesterday I saw examples of where people were face-hugging an isolated opponent to block their competition, aka their team behind them. Players who are using their allies for cover, even if they have better armor or more HP, purely because their lifeblood is more important to their competition next to them because they're not their teammate, and countless situations where you clearly see that players are holding fire to be able to secure kills. And the main question that I have to Wargaming is why in Clan Wars 
would you actively try to shield an ally, but in ranked, you probably wouldn't be so inclined to do so. And that's the fact that in Clan Wars, winning is everything. It doesn't matter if you, if you win well or if you lose well, you're still losing. Whereas in the ranked version of World of Tanks, because you are in competition with all of your teammates as well, why would you even try and keep his gun in the game when if he dies, then maybe you can also be able to get some more of the damage of that juicy, tasty tank that's killing him. Now, while not all of this information is new, I'm just trying to sum up why ranked makes me who I genuinely think that deep down I am a team player at heart. I love team-based games. I love nothing more than to be surprised by random acts of teamwork and camaraderie to be able to take down battles. And the trigger for me wanting to present all of this information and try and collate it into one place happened yesterday on Malinovka. Playing Malinovka in a light tank or in an EBR-105, a wheeled vehicle, you are the MVP for your team. You have to do everything that you can to be able to provide all the vision possible. However, I will admit that when I'm playing a light tank, I hate the other light tank on my team. Because of the way that role experience works in the game, a flawed system to be able to find a way to give chevrons out, in my opinion, in an arbitrary fashion. And light tanks get bonuses depending on their initial spot and then the extra vision that they will be able to put out. And so I'm looking at the 13105 immediately and thinking like, Ugh, how can I get more spots than him so I can have more experience at the end of the game or I can be the biggest loser? But this was still fairly early on in the evening before I felt that all of my sense of wholesome had been fully squeezed out of me uh, from playing ranked all the way through the evening. And so I'm actually going to try and communicate with the 13105 on my team. Now their name is not actually Penetratlia, uh, that's their anonymizer name. Their name is actually Muckenpee, so that's what I'm going to be calling them throughout the battle, as you're going to see afterwards. So I've come up with a, a plan with the 13105, asking them where they're going to go. They're planning on making their way over towards this position on the map, and so I'm going to go and try and spot the other side. I tell Muckenpee that I hope that they've got camo, because it's really tricky to be able to actually make it to that position if there's an EBR on the enemy team. So he says that he's not going to go there at the beginning and that he's going to instead try and just take a step back and see if he could manage to, I guess, get some shells into the EBR 105. And look at that. Just as I'm managing to get my initial spot over here, Mac and P is going to town on the 13105 who is trying to get an early spot on Malinovka. And McEnpee's going to miss one shot there, almost at point blank. But hopefully he's got one more left. And there you go. Shuts them down. Immediately, McEnpee is playing in a ludicrous fashion. Why? Because, honestly, McEnpee is doing something which you shouldn't do. And that is to risk yourself early on in the battle where it is not safe to do so. All it would have taken is one stray shot from the enemy team. Or one penetrating high explosive round that set McEnpee on fire from the enemy EBR-105, and he would be in a whole world of hurt. I, at that moment, was calling Mac and P like the biggest chant in World of Tanks. The fact that they're not playing a meta vehicle, the 13105, it's pretty good at dealing damage, but it's pretty terrible for actually managing to scout. And Muck and P just annihilates the EBR at the start of the battle, and then he does it again. He takes out the T-100 LT as well. And I was just jumping for joy on the stream at the time. While also trying to do my work over on this part of the map. Because obviously Muck and P has the other side of the map covered. I think I'm going to have to stop in a second to actually say something. Uh, let's hope I do. Yeah, I say, uh, 13105, uh, WTF, uh, you kill both light tanks. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what a bops. I obviously meant to say what a boss. Because that was just incredible. Light tanks, as I said, on Malinovka are the most important vehicles. And Muck and P says, just lucky. And I say, I press my negative key and I say, all skill. What an absolute boss. And I can't believe that I'm actually playing with someone that instead of being in that kind of selfish fashion, we feel like you're in competition with them to be able to try and get one of those top slots to either gain a chevron in a loss or to try and get two chevrons if you manage to win to now be actually cheering on my competition because I, I know that we both want to try and win together, right? Now, it's all fun and games when this happens between two light tanks on Malinovka. I want to clarify 
that if I was on Himmelsdorf, for example, I would probably be cussing if they hit their shells cleanly. Um, I would probably be hoping that they get terrible RNG or they get shut down really early on in the game. Because on Himmelsdorf, it's not like I'm playing on Malinovka where I can be a lot more relaxed about the situation. And I know as long as I don't completely suck that I should be able to at least gain a chevron if we win. But when you're on those maps which are not meta for your vehicle, you've really got to be very careful about working with your allies. So unfortunately what we're going to see now is I make a bit of a greedy play to switch out for intuition, and then I forgot that this vehicle doesn't have 105 millimeters of penetration anymore. Um, so I actually only do 105 damage instead to the T124 instead of the 500 that I would have dealt. I'm going to try and be greedy again and go for the back here with the HE. That was a misplay. I should have fired an AP round there at the back of the T124. And how bizarre is it? I swear this game is just messing me with me right now with the nerf to the HE pen on the EBR 105 because I dealt 105 damage to that T124 twice. Sometimes things that happen in, in life are really bizarre. Okay, so in this kind of a scenario, I'm just trying to keep the, the STB1 and keep the Progetto lit up. I'm trying to get some more of that spotting, trying to dip my toes into the bath progressively faster because I need to get that spotting early on in this game. We're going to fire on the move against the TVP, not be able to get them. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Have to make a quick turn back in and now I'm down to a one shot. I mean, am I hiding behind the TVP there? Maybe subconsciously I am hiding behind the TVP. I don't know. That wasn't what I was actively trying to do, but when I look at it now, it kind of looks like, was I? I don't think so. I think that was me just trying to stay below the, the ridge line over there. But these are the kind of things, like, I even have to start questioning myself. Because when you're in the moment, and what you feel like your passion wants you to do, right? And when you feel as if, like, well, you know, the TVP can take a hit. I don't really need them. All I need is to just keep spotting in this game and just keep bombing it around in my EBR, trying to keep my opponents at about 400 meters. I've got all of Bond equipment, I've got all the crew skills, I've got Santa Claus on this tank, I've got everything that I need to be able to, uh, to spot my opponents at decent distances and to keep them in it. So, it's hilarious, it's hilarious that Muck and P is now up to 4 kills in a 13-105, that's right, Muck and P has managed to kill 40% of the enemy team, and he's killed as, uh, double the tanks that we have. Wow, that VZ-55, where did that shell go? That must have been my kind of RNG like I was having yesterday in some of my games with all the ghost shells that I had against the EBRs. Anyway, I want to stay on point. I want to stay to, uh, as to what I'm focused on doing right now, and that is trying to squeeze out as much spotting as I possibly can to hopefully get higher and higher up the team list and hopefully get some of those juicy double chevrons. Okay, so I'm going to load a high explosive round here. And I'm going to go after the VZ-55. I don't get spotted by the IA. Ooh, I do get spotted by someone. But hopefully I should be able to do some damage. Gosh, HE rounds, man. You can't even do, like... You can't even do 9 damage to the side of a Czechoslovakian heavy tank in that scenario. And I'm going to use the building here to be able to avoid the Kranvang. And I'm just hoping that they miss, 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 miss. Oh, they actually hit, but just my wheel. Unlucky, son. All right, I'm going to go and try and help out the STB-1 against the IS-4, who's managed to get locked in. And I'm hoping that Mac and P is going to be able to get up on the hill and try and put some rounds into the Kranvong, who is a two-shot, but so is Mac and P. And both of them are autoloaders, so I guess it's going to be a fair fight up there. So I get into position. I'm going to put a heat round into the back of the IS-4. I'm going to see if I get spotted. I do, so I've got to be careful here that I don't get caught out. I see that Mac and P's managed to get the Kranvong down to a single shot. And I was actually rooting for Mac and P to be able to uh, to get a top gun in this scenario. But still, if I can get a kill, I'm going to take a kill. Uh, if I get a clean shot, stranger things have happened, right? Maybe the Kranvang will be able to take him out. And if this hits, well, it hits. Good stuff. And just like that. Muck and P saying GG's in the chat. I say you too. And this was continued in the garage. But just before we take a look in the garage, let's take a look at the result. And that was that I was absolutely chuffed that me and Mac and P, aka Penetrilla, in the AMX 13105, that is their anonymized name, both finished in those top slots, and that we managed to kill 70% of the enemy team between us. I was just so absolutely stoked. So after the battle, I nearly immediately opened up a chat window with Mac and P, who was the AMX 13105 in that last game, and I, I got to see them say, dude, I was the AMX 13105. I replied saying, dude, I was the EBR. You played great. Mac and P says, man, I know. And then I said, I'll be honest, usually in ranked, when I play an EBR, I hate all light tanks, even those on my own team. 
because I'm trying to compete with them for the spots. And Mac and P says, I hate EBRs because those guys take all my EXP. I let him know that he was wholesome and played like a total boss, risking himself at the start of the battle, which is probably not the best way to play inside ranked. And that I was thrilled that we both got doubles in that game. And this game really hit me hard. This moment really hit me hard as to why am I not having more feelings like this? where you work together with your allies to be able to achieve your goals rather than in the inherently selfish system that we currently are in. And that is the reason. It is the system itself that encourages toxic behavior and selfish play that is preventing having these awesome moments of teamwork. So if I was in control at Wargaming and tomorrow I had to walk in and try and fix Ranked to improve the team play and to reduce the toxicity in it, what would I do? How would I fix it? Well, it's pretty simple. I would change the system so that all the winners gain chevrons and all the losers lose chevrons. Incentivize the player base to do everything that they can to win the game. Then maybe we're going to see them learning how to play better and work well together than having some lone wolf selfish mindset that can just encourage toxic behavior to happen inside the game. If you think about ranked as being the, the pinnacle of World of Tanks, outside of Clan Wars, at least that a solo player can be able to achieve, if you think that that kind of sets the meta and then it trickles down into the random queue as well, I genuinely think that improvements to the ranked system which it feels like we're getting pretty much every three months, so it's a big part of World of Tanks, could have big implications for the health and the team play of the player base. Now, of course, there are a few issues that this would bring. Firstly, the best players would definitely progress slower through the system. I'd, I'd be one of them. I'd have to put more time into ranked to be able to get through it. The other issue that could arise is that in a system which is not chevron positive, then it would slow down the progression of not just the better players, but also the weaker players as well. And so if Wargaming really want to inject some chevrons into the system, why do we only have a report feature in World of Tanks? And why don't we also have a reward feature? And maybe this could be even something that they test out in ranked to even roll out into the random queue at a later date. What I'm suggesting is that in the post game, every single player on your team has a vote and they could vote for a player who was either maybe just a real nice teammate, that person who went the extra mile to try and win the battle, or alternatively, you know, that hero who ended up getting six kills and going one versus three at the end. And then if enough of the team vote for a player, then you could have a little bit of a poll system, then maybe you could give them an extra chevron. Or possibly if they're on the losing team, then you can give them uh, no chevron loss, or even if Wargaming want to inject some chevrons into the system, a chevron gain. This would consequently change the system from being one where you're in competition with your team to being one where your team, if you're nice or if you play really good, will reward you with a chevron through uh, the MVP award at the end of the game. And I think that would be just so incredible that it's not the biggest loser who camped at the back enough and managed to get some damage and get a few kills when they knew perfectly well it was going to be a loss that is the person who gains a chevron and continues up the system. But that person who maybe tried to make the extra move to be the first one in, to encourage the breach, maybe the, the person who got the team together through using the map commands or just talking in chat, that propelled a comeback and got the team the victory. Because the experience system does not show it all. And as a player who, when I am on the losing team, I very, very rarely lose a chevron and I, I mostly am ending up in the top position and gaining. It just doesn't feel fair that it's because I know how to play the system and I can be able to predict what my, my team are going to do and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to outcompete them, that I should get rewarded rather than the players who are trying to make the team plays to be able to win the game. And finally, I'd like to address a concern that I bet Wargaming are immediately going to bring up and that is, well, how do you stop people just playing like a bot where they rush in and try and rush in and they try and rush in and then they just hope that they manage to get carried by their team. 
well, they're not ever going to make any progression in the system because they're not influencing the battle to be able to win it. They'll get held back. Their team is never going to vote for them to be an MVP. And eventually, I guess they'll just have to give up kind of how I feel with my sanity when I play ranked in the current system, where I truly feel that every time I log in and I play it, I just become a worse person by the end of the session. And all I really want at the end of the day is to try and play my best for the team and hopefully have a big impactful battle to be able to win with them rather than to win at their expense. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what you think about my suggestions and if you think that there are any huge problems with them and if you have any ideas to add to the mix. And as always, good luck in Ranked if you're playing it over the next couple of weeks. And you've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.